In this Framer tutorial, we're gonna recreate this sneaky parallax scroll effect without using any complex frame structures or settings. As usual, you'll find that working file below. Now, let's go. If we look at what I created here, I have a section. Within the section, I have a particles component and I have a stack of text fields and a button. I have a content or not just one content, but three content frames. Each of these contain one image and one blur. The blur is just the image, but with a blur filter. And we're gonna recreate this and it's pretty simple. So I'll hit F to get the frame tool and I'll just create a frame like this. I will then go to the fill and do the color picker to get the same background color. After that, I'm actually gonna go and start by creating frames for the images. So one frame here, a bit of a smaller frame here maybe, and a bigger frame over here. Put that maybe even a tiny bit bigger. Um, that's all good. I will maybe just be the lazy person here and I'll go over here and just copy over the text fields, get them over here. Uh, let's see, we have the button, whoops. We have the button, we have the body text, we have agony and we have chapter. Now we're gonna remove the animations from these because we're gonna go through the animations together. And this color doesn't seem to be quite right. Let's see if we can fix that. Just maybe add a white color, but it's still not working. What is this? Oh, sorry, we have a blend mode applied. So I'll do that again and add a linear gradient. Maybe we flip that around so it looks the same like that. Okay, that looks not similar yet because we haven't added the images or the particles. So let's jump over here. I'll take the particles, copy, or you know what? Let's do it this way. We'll go to framer.supply and we'll do it from scratch. So we scroll down here. I'll go to the particles component. I'll hit copy. Then I'm gonna go back into my little project here paste and we have this particles component. I'll place it in the top right and I'll, sorry, top left and I'll resize it like this. And automatically you can see that it's pinned to all sides. If it's not, make sure that it's pinned to all sides. That's what we want so that it scales responsively. I'm gonna remove the backdrop. So, or actually I cannot remove it. So I'll just set it to 0% opacity. And these particles here, I want them to be kind of yellow because it's, it's supposed to look like fire particles. And we're gonna change the color here then, maybe to something like, I don't know, this is maybe a bit too yellow, maybe a bit darker like that. Uh, I think that's fine. Um, okay. There we have almost everything. I'll actually send these particles to the back and I'll lock this whole layer just by hitting Command L or Control L on Windows. So yeah, that's just because we don't want to accidentally select that layer whenever we're editing stuff. Okay, so here we have our image frames. We can rename them, I'll hit Command R and rename this to content. Do the same for this, content, content. And within the content, first of all, we can remove the fill. I'll copy and paste this same content frame here, put it inside of this frame, decrease the size a little bit, and then I'll head over here and go to this image, go to fill, and right click the image, copy, go back here, go down to fill, right click here and say paste. Then once that's done, maybe first we rename it to image, 
I'll copy and paste it again. Increase the size. Send this one to the back. And then we'll go down here to styles, filters, blur, and maybe increase the blur a bit. Let's say 24, but you have to be careful with the blur because it does, as it says here, it does impact the performance of your website, but it looks so god darn cool. I just wanna have so many blurs. Okay, and as you can see here now, it kind of looks like a glass effect. And the reason for that is because this outer frame is currently cutting off the blur. So if I set the overflow to visible here on once again, the container content here, you can see that the blur now can go outside of the frame. I'll also make sure to change the name of the background blur here to blur. And there we have it. Now I'll speed ramp this and do the same for all the images. Five hours later. And there we have something. I'll go into the particles here and maybe give them a bit of a opacity. Maybe something like that. 30% um, should be fine. And uh, yes, I think that's it for the layout. Now, if we wanna make this responsive, we also need to make sure that everything is pinned correctly. So I'll actually go in here, I'll say that this should be pinned to the right side, not the left side. So maybe, maybe even the minus 96 here so that it goes outside. Um, and then we can pin it to the bottom, maybe 96 here too. And I'll just give it a slight rotation something like that and for this one maybe we pin it to the left side 56 maybe i don't know 160. i'll tilt this two a bit and for this one let's say 96 and uh, from the top let's say 120 and tilt it something like that or maybe we even want this to go on top of the text but for that to happen we need to take all of these and place them in the top so something like that um, which reminds me all of these layers here are now floating so let's just target them and wrap them into a stack and we're gonna change the height of this stack to be fit content because when we do that, not only is it gonna be much easier to handle overall, but we can use this little guy here, gap, and change it to something like 24 or 32. And that looks pretty cool. I'll rename this to text container. And there we have something. Uh, not exactly what it looks like here, but I think it's fine. And with this, we are actually ready to start animating. So I will put this into this example view here, push it up one step so that when we preview it, we can see both animations right after one another to kind of see if it looks good or not. I'll change the width of this whole frame here that we can now call section. I'll change the width to fill, something like that. And yeah, still looks good. So with this, we're ready to jump into animations. So the first thing, if we just hit play here, and we scroll down. So these particles, they're animating by themselves. Uh, you're gonna see we don't really have to do anything. We can, um, what we can do is we can change the way they move. We can say that they're gonna move according to the cursor or if they're gonna move randomly, the density, uh, a bunch of things. You can see that the images here, they're kind of rotating. And while they're rotating, they are also going at different speeds. So we get this kind of parallax effect. 
And you can see that the text is fading in as we scroll into the section. As we scroll out of the section, it stays, but then it comes back when we scroll back up. And now if we scroll too far, it fades out again and etc. That's how it works. If we scroll down to this section, nothing happens except for the particles, of course. So let's start by adding animations to the images here. So I'm gonna take the first image here in the top. I'm gonna go to effects. I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to go to scroll speed. And here I'm going to add something like 130. Then I'm going to go to this image. I'm going to go to effects again, scroll speed and say maybe 120. And for this one, you guessed it, scroll speed. And let's say 140. Now, if we play this again, remember the first one we'll see is the one I made before. And the second one is the one we made. But as you can see, they kind of scroll outside of the frame before we even get there. Now, to change this, we have to go into the images again. I'll target them all at the same time because we're going to make the same change here. I'll go to effects, scroll speed, and I'll change from current to scroll. And here we can adjust the position to the top of the viewport. So when are they going to start to scroll? So let's say when it's 96 pixels from the top of the viewport. Once again, the first animation. And then we come to the second one. Something like that looks pretty cool, right? And as you can see, the particles are still moving according to the cursor. One thing that we're not doing here right now, one thing that is missing is the scroll spin. So nothing is spinning as we scroll right now. So I'm gonna go into each and every one of these again, and I'm gonna go to effects, and I'm gonna hit loop. And with this loop, we're going to create a rotation of 360 degrees and we're going to change the transition here because if we play this now, it's going to be super fast. So I'll go in here and I'll change the time here from one second to 65 seconds. If we play it again, once again, this is the first animation. Now, if we come to the second one, you can see that they're kind of looping, circling, spinning in this pattern super nicely. Now, the last thing we have to do for this to be finished is just to add the text animations. And for the text animation, I'm just gonna go to effects with chapter here selected. I'm gonna go to effects. I'm gonna say scroll animation and here comes a thing. We're going to want it to trigger when this section is in view. Now, one thing we didn't do before was adding a scroll section. The scroll section allows us to target this specific section for scroll animations. So if I give this a name here by adding the scroll section, so let's say agony section. Now, with this name, if I go back into my text field here and into the animation, when I have section in view, I can set the section here to be agony section. So the animation is gonna trigger whenever we get to this section. And then we can choose if it's gonna be when the top of our viewport, so our screen hits the canvas, or when it's the middle of our screen that hits the canvas or the section, or if it's the bottom, when the bottom of our screen hits the section. So we can try this out. Let's go with center for now, and let's see what happens. Now it's gonna be a fade in animation, but let's give it a try. So we'll scroll, 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 and you can see that kind of when we come to the center here, 
So the section starts somewhere around here. So when I scroll, you can see that it fades in just past that middle point. If I change this to, let's see, maybe we take the bottom just to try it out. So whenever the bottom of our screen hits the section, you're going to see that chapter is already there. Like we can't even see the animation. If we change it to the top and we scroll past my section first, and now, now it's going to wait until we hit the top of the section for it to trigger. So you can see here, that's the difference. So I'm going to go for top of the section and we're going to have a fade in. So that's good. It goes from 0% in opacity. And you can see here, I go into enter. That's the enter animation. It's going to have 0% opacity and it's going to be one in scale. So the same size, uh, but I'm going to give it a bit of a rotate just for fun. And maybe I'll even offset it so that it comes from the bottom. So let's say 16 pixels from the bottom. The spring animation that is already set here will be fine. And now if we play it again and I scroll down, you can see how it slides in like that. Kind of cool. Now, the coolest thing here is that I can just right click this animation, copy, select all of these elements, right click, paste, paste effects. And now if we scroll past the first section here, scroll into the second one, you can see that they're all applied just by copying it over like that. Now it doesn't really look exactly like this one because it has some more smoothness to it. So we can go into the animations here and go to enter, go to spring. And here you can play around all day long. I'll just add a bunch of damping, maybe um, set the stiffness to 300 and maybe add some mass. I'm just going on a whim here. But here's the first animation, and here is the second one. We scroll out again. Now maybe it's a bit too slow, but you get the point. You can just continue doing this until you find something that looks good. Now, before we end this, look here. Something is cut off. Why is the glow not showing below here? Well, this is because we wrap this into a stack, and the stack is hiding stuff. So if we make sure that we change the overflow of this text container stack to visible, you're going to see that when we come down here, it is no longer cut off. But play around with this. I'm sure you'll find something that looks amazing.